My cousin. My Rosalind. Oh, Cupid have mercy, not a word. Is all of this for your father? No. Some of it is for my child's father. Oh, how full of briars is this working day world. They are but burrs, cousin, thrown upon thee in a holiday foolery. If we walk not in the trodden paths, our very petticoats will catch them. I can shake them off from my coat. Th these burrs are in my heart. Come, come, wrestle with thy affections. <laughs> oh, well, they take the part of a better wrestler than myself. Oh, a good wish upon you. Is it possible on such a sudden you should fall into so strong a liking? My father, the Duke, loved his father dearly. Does it therefore ensue that you should love his son dearly? By this kind of chase I should hate him, for my father hated his father dearly. Yet I hate not Orlando. Mistress, dispatch you with your safest haste and get you from our court. Me, uncle? You, cousin. Within these ten days, if that thou be'st found so near our public court as twenty miles, thou diest for it. Did I offend your highness? Thus do all traitors. Let it suffice thee that I trust thee not. Yet your mistrust cannot make me a traitor. Tell me, where on the likelihood depends? Uh, thou art thy father's daughter. There's enough. So was I when your highness took his dukedom. So was I when your highness banished him. Treason is not inherited, my lord, or if we derive it from our friends. What's that to me, hmm? My father was not a traitor. Then, good my liege, mistake me not so much to think that my poverty is treacherous. Dear Sovereign, hear me speak. Aye, <clears throat> Celia, we stayed her for your sake. I did not then entreat to have her stay. That was your pleasure and your own remorse. I was too young that time to value her, but now I know her. If she be a traitor, why so am I? She is too subtle for thee. And her patience, her very silence and her smoothness speak to the people, and they pity her. Thou art a fool. She robs thee of thy name. Firm and irrevocable is my doom which I have passed upon her. She is banished. Oh, pronounce that sentence then on me, my leash. I cannot live out of her company. You are a fool. You, niece, provide yourself. If you outstay the time, upon mine honour, and in the greatness of my word, you die. Duh! <laughs> oh, let my father seek another heir. <laughs> For by this heaven, now are our sorrows pale, Say what thou canst. I'll go along with thee. Why? Whither shall we go? Uh, to seek my uncle in the forest of Arden. Alas! What danger will it be to us maids as we are to, to travel forth so far? Well, I'll put myself in poor and mean attire, and with a kind of umber smirch my face. The like do you, and so shall we pass along and never stir assailants. Hmm. Were it not better, because I am more than common tool, that it suit me all points like a man? A gallant kirtle axe upon my tie, a boar spear <laughs> in my hand? <laughs> what shall I call thee when thou art a man? <laughs> I'll have no worse name than Jove's own page. Oh, and therefore, call me Ganymede. <laughs> but what will you be called? Oh, something that hath a reference to my state. 
no longer Celia, but Aliena. <laughs> but, cousin, what if we assage to steal that clownish fool from your father's court? Hmm? Will he not be a comfort to our travel? Hmm. Leave me alone to woo him. Let's away and get our jewels and wealth together. Devise the fittest time and the safest way to hide us from the pursuit that will be made after my flight. <sighs> now go we in content to liberty and not to banishment. <laughs>